Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Thursday's end of days trading, the 2nd of June 2016. As always, please do uh, visit www.tradesignal.com and uh, download the uh, latest app via the Android app and the, uh, uh, the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Uh, signals and market updates from leading providers and myself included. Okay, in terms of the uh, market reaction, folks, the uh, European markets certainly finished in the negative, followed, uh, following on from the Asian session, obviously, into the negative. But US markets certainly seem to have shaken that off to a large extent, and we'll try and work out why. In terms of fundamentals, let's go over them first and foremost, okay? Uh, the mid-morning update, I think we were up to the ECB interest rate decision, and we were soon approaching that, and the OPEC, obviously, meeting as well. Now, the OPEC meeting failed to reach any agreement, although having said that, the markets is the most important thing is how the market reacts. And the market basically has reacted positively overall. Initially, it sold off and then it obviously has uh, retraced all, all the uh, the sell off. Now, if I bring up the chart of oil and uh, I certainly uh, uh, give you an insight here uh, with regards to crude oil, you can see here I did explain to you uh, yesterday that you have a potential HNS formation. And that certainly seems to be the dominant theme at the moment. Uh, nothing really has changed other than the fact that uh, we basically here uh, failed to reach an agreement. And the fact that uh, everybody had an amicable relationship, especially with the Saudi and the Iranians. And they said that they were looking, for, looking forward to working together and the next meeting would potentially be in November. Although there may be an extraordinary meeting in August. Everything certainly seems to be hodgepodge at present, really. It's no real clarification, but the bullish argument was the fact that uh, there is some type of agreement or there is some sort of working relationship between the Iranians and the Saudis, and that obviously put a potential bullish bias on the market. And as you can see in the 60 minute chart, we sold off initially and we've certainly retraced that sell off. So, or well, net net, certainly uh, bullish from this perspective, but now we are back into resistance. So what do we do back at this $49 level? That's the question, okay? Currently resistance, holding resistance, and now we've got Mr. Fed Kaplan talking about increase in interest rates again. Uh, we had the ECB relatively dovish as well to a large extent. Uh, they were certainly dovish, so again, that helped the market come off the lows as well. Uh, so we really are in a quagmire. I mean, we've had US data as well. Uh, employment data more or less came in stronger than expected or more or less in line. And... Again, supporting the argument for for more uh, for more rate hikes. So again, a hawkish stance there. So you have the hawkish stance in the U.S. and that's obviously negative for the U.S. markets. And then you have the dovish stance in the via the ECB, which again obviously is weaker euro and obviously European equities going higher. So it certainly needs to. We are in a conundrum, a fundamental conundrum at present. Almost each indices has its own story. Uh, the reason why I'm short right now is because the Nasdaq is obviously into gap fill resistance. My current trade, I'll certainly inform you. You can see that we're approaching gap fill. Uh, the 10-minute chart as well has closed the gap as well at uh, the 45.20 zone. Hence the reason why I'm actually short. Now, I actually took a short at the 4.517 level, which really was at 4.515 and then obviously gap fill. We had the Nikkei down overnight, so I'm looking for a potentially uh, uh, potential sell-off. And obviously playing this HNS formation down to gap fill below at 44440. So certainly looking very interesting there. Okay. Okay. Now, other than that, uh, the fact that, uh, like I stated, the o OPEC failed to agree. Uh, and really, the only plus side really was the amicable relationship between the Saudi and the Iranians. And it leaves a certain ho small uh, amount of lingering hope that uh, they may well come to an agreement further down the line. Uh, initialist jobless claims, US jobless claims again were, were certainly stronger and overall we've had hawkish uh, commentaries thus far. Okay, now where are these markets positioned now technically? Let's go to the euro stocks and let's see exactly where we are. Now, from my understanding and my perspective, given the fact that we've had a lack of uh, a, a rally, I mean, I did expect a rally as well after hours and it really we have failed to do so and we have basically consolidated here. You are looking at a potential, if the Euro USD fails to move lower, then you are looking at a potential sell off in the Euro stocks down to uh, gap fill. Given the fact that the, U the US markets certainly are into resistance, you are looking at resistance in European markets too. So, looking for a potential flush going into tomorrow on the Euro stocks going down to gap fill at 3010, especially given the fact that Draghi has failed to really ignite any type of uh, momentum in the equity market. A lot of that may well have been 
already factored in. I mean, given the fact that we've rallied from 2,900 up to 3,100 and back down again. Certainly a strong argument that certainly has been factored in. Given the fact that oil prices obviously into resistance as well. German DAX, uh, I already uh, surprised with the German DAX. Lack of movement on the upside again. Uh, really, from my understanding, uh, we certainly did fail. And uh, given the fact that the German DAX is currently trading around the 10,250 level, we are back into this 200 MA resistance. So looking at resistance here for the German DAX. But again, bear in mind, 10,160 will hold support. Okay. Gap fill down here is 10,200, so looking at that holding support as well. The 60-minute chart, the German DAX has that unfilled gap below. I'm very surprised. I did expect a rally to 10,300, 10,300 plus post Draghi, but we failed to do so. So therefore, you are looking for a reversal here on the German DAX as well. The French CAC, more or less a similar story. If I bring up the French CAC, again, you had a three-bar pullback. You would expect a rally, but we failed to do so. Uh, again, that unfilled gap certainly is acting like a mar mar magnet, and you have this bear flag formation looking to potentially push lower. Okay, in terms of the FTSE 100, let's have a look here. Now, the FTSE itself, given the fact that we've had a lack of uh, agreement with OPEC, you are looking at a potential bear flag scenario now. We are currently trading at the 6215 level, so bear that in mind. Uh, the upper level is 6210, and then obviously you have a horizontal resistance up here. Which is around the 6220 zone. So 6220 will be your pivot high on the FTSE. If you do crack through that, then you got 6240 as resistance as well. Now, given the fact, like I stated, uh, the fact that oil is now into resistance, you are looking at weakness on the FTSE, uh, from my understanding. Now, the 10 minute chart has gap fill at 6190, so you are you do have a on fill gap below. You are 6220 resistance and then 6225 as well. Yes, you do have an inverted head and shoulders formation, but that can only occur if obviously. US markets move higher or the uh, the actual uh, oil prices move higher and I can't see either of them happening with the Nikkei down overnight and the USD JPY below 109 it certainly seems very hard again you have Brexit concerns as well with the uh, news that uh, odds of a leave uh, vote jump for Brexit bookmakers so that's uh, that news certainly isn't positive for the FTSE and will certainly have a negative bias, okay? So that really is a summation. Uh, oil prices into resistance, no OPEC agreement, obviously negative to a large extent, although the counter-argument is that the uh, Saudis and Iranians are actually sitting on the same table and are actually talking. If they're talking, then that's obviously good news because it will eventually lead to an agreement. So it really is, it depends on which way you look at it, okay? And that's the important thing. For now, uh, from my understanding and the information that I have at present, oil into resistance, Aussie Kiwi under pressure again into resistance. US markets again uh, back into resistance. I mean, if I look at the S&P 500 at the moment, if I bring up the daily chart, you're back at that crucial resistance zone. I mean, if I just draw a horizontal line right across here, you can see we're back into that 21 or 2. Can we make a new high? But even with the Nikkei down overnight, very, very hard. Okay, I can't see that uh, occurring at all. So looking for a potential reversal here, folks. Okay. I think that's a wrap. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and open up a trading account and take advantage of that 25% new bonus offer.